Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Um, on my way to the gym this morning and I decided to hit you with part three on this series with uh, the Boston Celtics, Ima Udoka, um, and the whole thing. Um, you know, primarily, actually, this is about giving Brett Favre the smoke that everybody has been asking about. Not my first time talking about it. I said what I had to say about it when it first came out. Uh, not surprised in the slightest, but I want to kind of tie it all together. I want it to make sense for me to address it uh, because outside of the gossip shit, you know, that's not why I'm here. I'm here uh, to talk about ways that we can truly make progress as a people. And I've been doing that for decades. I have been leading research through the Odyssey Project, offering programs through the Odyssey Project, uh, addressing young black males, setting standards, and doing my best to live by the standards that I have set as a black man. And that that's always gonna be where I address something from. Um, I'm going to love on black men, I'm gonna do everything I can to defend and protect black men, but I'm also going to hold black men accountable. With that being said, if you believe in the work that we do at the Odyssey Project, if you believe in what I stand for and what I have presented over the years, you've probably, you have probably seen me um, and experienced me at least 10 years on social media, 12 years on social media. I've been doing it long before then. Uh, but if you believe in the work that I've been and the message that I've consistently delivered, show some love, so show some support. Go into the description box, click the link, and donate. Um, if you are a cash out person, that uh, information is also in the description box. So in the first two parts, I primarily focused on the need for a code, a need for a standard, a need for uh, that to be a clear uh, understanding. In the first video, I talked about real specifically that uh, as black men, we don't get the same rules as white men. So for the people who were talking about why is this such a big issue when Brett Favre and uh, what's going on, and my thing is, fuck Brett Favre, excuse my French ladies, uh, I'm in that mode, I've been in that mode for a few weeks now, I'm just like, hey, get, you gonna get the raw of me because that's where I'm at right now, because I feel like we are truly descending rather than ascending as a people because we're losing ourselves, we're losing our love for ourselves, we're losing our love for our need to be together, we are drifting apart and that divisiveness is destroying us, which is their goal in the first place. So. Anyway, we're talking about Brett Favre. I'm looking at what's going on with Robert Sarver, uh, the majority owner of the Phoenix Suns and the environment that he has created in the 20 years that he has been the owner of the team. And somewhere close to 20 years, I forget, 17 to 20 years, somewhere up in there. Uh, but definitely he bought the team in the early 2000s and he created an environment where he uh, was extremely racist, uh, misogynistic, and uh, it was open, it was a harsh environment. Um, there was an um, external investigation done, uh, journalistic, uh, investigative journalism uh, delved into it. I forget who it was, maybe ESPN or something like that, but they looked into it and a bunch of stuff was uncovered. And it was bad enough that one of the minority owners said that they needed to vote on kicking him out as a as an owner he's been suspended for a year uh and so that's what i see the comparison when i compare what's happening to adoku versus brett Favre, you know basically skating in an entirely different environment and situation which is just a, a piece of crap being a piece of crap um i look at the same league saying that an owner creates an entire environment where everybody feels uncomfortable, including the women, um, and is very disrespectful and disregarding towards, you know, the people that are working under him. Uh, and, and, and it has alluded to even owning them. Yeah. 
uh, it, it's, it's crazy that he gets a one-year suspension. Uh, Ima Adoku has an inappropriate relationship with someone that's a part of the organization, which is a violation of their no fraternization policy. And it ends up being a year suspension. Um, so I knew when you take a guy that took your team to the finals and you suspended for a year, that it's a lot more politics going on than a fraternization policy. From what I understand, that the person he messed with was married and the person she's married to is connected in some way to the team, whatever. Can't verify that yet, so that's still speculation. Uh, but it's definitely something going on there. And so that's what you compare it to. And here's the thing, though. We're never going to get an equal uh, or a fair shake in a system created for them to win. Uh, while Ima Udoku is well paid, he is definitely not a billionaire owner in a very powerful business consortium called the NBA. So he's definitely not going to get the same consideration that that guy, Robert Sarver, piece of trash, is getting. Now, here's my thing. I, I, I think I made it clear, but I want to make it clear again. My, my goal isn't to attack Ema, but my goal is also to say I believe we need coach. We need to have a standard. We need to have a way we need to move around. We need to also understand, you know, no matter how grimy you want to get, no matter how hard you want to go in the paint and do what you want to do, you got to understand you're playing by rules you don't control. So you got to understand that anybody that's ever been out there and had anybody around them to give them game, they told you you're going to have to be exceptionally better than they are to get the same opportunities. That you're going to have to skate through a lot more cleaner than they are able to do to stay in the game. That's the rules. And as long as we're playing in their game, we are going to have to play by their rules or sit up and deal with the consequences of getting your hand popped when you get out of line. Though That's that. So why this is happening to him and why that's happening to him is because he made a conscious decision to do something that he knew he shouldn't be doing and what the outcome could be. And he did that professionally and he did that personally. And he's going to have to deal with those things. My thing on that is I think we need to be a lot more aware of what we're doing. Not so much because I care about what they think about us, but because there are young black males that are looking up to him and saying, that's a possibility for me. And they're going to model their behavior after the person they are aspiring to emulate. And so he's sitting up saying it's okay to do that. And to me, it's not because... Um, I'm, I'm real big on if I'm telling you it's just me and you, it's me and you. Uh, even before we get married, if I'm telling you we're in a monogamous relationship, that's my word. And I don't think that's what people get. People don't get, I'm giving you my word. If your word isn't your bond and, and, and you're working your ass off to, to stick by your word uh, to the best of your ability. See, some things out of your control. You know, you have a bad money month, you may have to tell a couple of your your uh, your bill people, hey, I'm, I'm going to be a few days past you. I know I promised to pay you on the 5th, but I'm going to pay you on the 10th. That, you know, you're still going to keep your word. It's just going to be a little bit longer. But when it comes to, I am not going to be with anybody else except you as long as we agree that we're in a monogamous relationship, you can do that. But it's a character issue. I, I'm telling you now, ladies and men, you are not going to contract, marry, any type of agreement a person into something that their character cannot support. You can sit up and they can say all day long that they're going to do this, that they're going to do this, that they're, they're going to behave this way and they're going to behave that way. But I'm telling you right now that if they are not in themselves at a place where their character can hold them, where they can be in environments where they're going to be tempted because life's going to do that to you. Life is going to put you in places where you are going to be tempted. Life is going to put you in places where you're going to have to um, stand firm in 
places where you're being tempted and there is literally an opportunity to do something where you think you might be able to slide your character is it, it, in integrity is what holds you in place when you think you nobody's watching nobody's going to catch me i can get by with it it's not when it's being enforced and you're held in place you're just simply moving with the flow and so that's a character issue but to me that's important that's important because we need to be able to trust one another as a people, we need to be able to trust one another. I need to be able to trust when I go into a relationship with a woman that what we agree upon is what we agree upon. And she needs to be able to trust that what that what I have promised her I'm going to do, I'm going to do. And that they that 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 we can rest on that foundation and build. And that's got to be in business, that's in relationships, that's in parenting, that's in everything. And when you fall out of that, then there's a problem. So that was my issue with that. And my thing is, I think that unfortunately, because um, he's a black man in a position of power, in a storied organization, uh, he's going to get scrutinized. And it's also an opportunity to create divisiveness among us because there are going to be us who are going to be triggered by him cheating. There are going to be us who are going to look at it and say, man, people have been cheating since forever and they have. Uh, doesn't make it right. And that's one of the things that I want to get across too is we've got to stop measuring ourselves against low standards. You know, well, Brett Favre did this, well, Rob Sarver did this. Well, I'm hoping that that's not the model we're setting for our children to aspire to. We need to be modeling the type of men we want our children to be. More importantly, for fathers of daughters, we need to be modeling the life that we want our daughter's boyfriends and fiancés and husbands to be. And so that's the thing that, to me, is immediately uh, uh, up front. As far as this joker, Brett Favre. Now, Brett Favre is the dude that had everything in the world to say about Colin Kaepernick taking the knee. Uh, and it was unpatriotic. It was, un it was immoral. It was all of these things. And we're talking about a person who exercised a right that is represented underneath the flag. In other words, the flag is a representation of the country and the country's constitution. And the constitution says that you have a right to protest. You have a right to even burn that motherfucker if you want to. That's what we live. That's a part of the constitution is that I can disagree with the country. I can be at odds with my country and I can stand firm and still say, hey, this is my country. I love my country, but my country is a piece of crap right now. And I'm going to point out in ways it's a piece of crap because the only way to drive it towards anything close to what I would love to see it as is to push against the things that I don't believe in. That's the beauty of the constitution. It wasn't necessarily written for us because we were still slaves, but when the emancipation took place and we were uh, welcomed into the fold begrudgedly it gave those rights to us and so Colin Kaepernick is saying hey look I'm looking at some things and I don't like so this is going to be my protest he even agreed to alter it some because he was just sitting on the bench and so he decided I'll kneel the kneeling was something that was suggested to him by someone from the military to say, hey, show honor to the military by kneeling, but uh, also show protest by not standing for the pledge or for the Star Spangled Banner and whatever. But Brett had a whole lot to say about that. The meantime, this snake is sitting up and funneling from the then governor what amounts to, I'm, 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 I'm understanding, five million dollars of welfare funds now you've got to understand just how much of a snake this coward is we're not just talking about any welfare fund we're not just talking about any situation we're talking about the poorest state in the union economically the most in uh disenfranchised and impoverished population state in in, in a state um in a particular state. That state is extremely poor. And so now we're talking about the poorest of the poor of this country. And you decided to take funds that was meant to supplement them and subsidize them and build a soccer field, stadium, training center, whatever it was, 
for your daughter's college. Now, here's the crazy thing. Brett Favre has a name that despite him being trash, could pull sponsors. He could fundraise $5 million. Doesn't have to come out of his pocket. He can get sponsors and, fun and donors to donate $5 million to build that. But he decided to take it from the people who couldn't defend themselves from it. He decided to exploit something through the dirty dealings of politics and money and get it. And he may very well walk away from it. And whether he ever gets charged with it or not, we see the snake he is. We know that he knew it was wrong by the text message, specifically the text message where he's asking, is, this any, is there any way it can be traced back to me? That's saying right there that this is shady. We shouldn't be doing it. I don't want my name attached to it in any kind of way. And so that is something we definitely know. Uh, he knew this was unacceptable, but I'm going to do it anyway. Well, here's my things, brothers and sisters. Brett Favre isn't the man I'm aspiring to be. So I'm not going to give a whole lot of attention to when a white man does shady crap and gets away with it or doesn't get hit as hard as he should. Or it should or the press doesn't roll out on him uh, uh, as he should. I'm not going to invest a whole lot of time into worrying about white people doing what white people have been doing since day one. I'm going to be more focused on what are we going to do to protect ourselves from the mechanisms and the machinations of a system that's designed to keep us in the last place while they protect their wealth. I'm more concerned about how we can systematically operate in a way that we empower our children in their, in their minds and in their thinking so that they become forefront and futuristic in their thought processes, creative in their thought processes, imaginative, imaginative in their thought processes in a way that allows us to close the wealth gap. As we close the wealth gap, we close the disparity in power. And that's the thing that I'm focusing on. Someone getting away with some stuff they shouldn't have done. I don't want to be the person that can get away with stuff. I want to be the person that has a level of character that I don't have to worry about getting away with anything, but I'm still getting stuff done. There's a way to do that. You don't have to play the game the way they play it to win. You just got to play hard, know how the game is played, and know where the weak points are. Operate within a place of character. Now, I'm not saying that when they take something you don't take back you don't hit back i'm not saying that what i'm saying is i don't want to get away with stealing five million dollars um uh and i don't want to get away with anything that i shouldn't be doing and say well go look at what he's doing you need to be worried about him more than me look what he did i want to sit up and say man i'm doing the best i can to do this shit right i'm going to make mistakes i'm not perfect but i'm not going to be out there tr purposely burning people that's the thing that I want to be able to say as a man. I want my children, my grandchildren. I want the young boys that I work with. I want my everybody that I'm involved with, my business partner, my clients to be able to look at me and say, man, this guy carries himself in a way that I would love to work with him, that I would love to tr uh, be around him. I love what he's doing. That's the kind of life I want to live. And that's the example I want to set for young black boys and young black girls. That's the example I want to set for anyone who's observing me and seeing how I move. And that's so, so what, trash like Brett Favre is doing gets my attention because we need to know what's going on and we need to address it. We don't sweep it under the rug. But at the same time, when we see one of our brothers slip and we we, we know that it's an issue, I want to be able to say, hey, because there are kids watching that people want to know what's going on. I don't want to give it a pass, but I don't want to tear him down and beat him up. And Look, you did something you weren't supposed to do. I think by now, if he hasn't, at some point he's going to come through with a press conference. He's going to acknowledge, hey, I, I didn't do, and he may have already done it and I just don't know. I didn't do it. Okay, you acknowledged it. Now let's see you clean it up. That's all I'm going to say because I guarantee you, if you look in the closet of any of us, there's, there's going to be things that we've done that we're not proud of. It, that's not what makes us men or women or exceptional what makes us exceptional is how did we clean it up and how well have we done since then have we created a pattern of screw-ups or do or, or do we see our mistakes as anomalies along along the course of our lives that's going to be the determining factor so let me leave you with this i'm pulling for the brother 
I think a year suspension is absolutely absurd, especially when you've given a racist owner a year suspension for terrorizing his staff for 20 years. So uh, that is where I'm at with that. So to the people who were worried about Brett Favre, you know, you let crap be crap. We're aiming for something high uh, for Ima Aduka. Uh, and if you notice, I didn't mention Nia. Uh, she's been thrust into something she didn't ask for. Um, and everybody's creating narratives around that without knowing what's going on with it. I'm not going to talk on it. Uh, I'm a huge fan. Uh, have been for quite some time. And the older she's gotten, the more of a fan I've become. Uh, but that's her life. Uh, whatever they determine to work out, that's their life. Uh, my focus has been on him being what he says he's going to be regardless to it was if it was someone no one knew they would deserve the same level, level of consideration honesty and, and 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 uh trust that we're saying she deserves and 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 so that's the thing i'm saying every last one of our women are valuable uh some of us need to be more aware of our value but I see value in everyone. We've just got to get to a point where we see it and our behavior will then reflect it. On that note, look, I'm out of here. I done made it to the gym a while ago and I need to get in and get my workout on. On that note, you guys have an unbelievable day and I will talk to you soon.